My son, Paul, must be very frightened right now. I know I'm frightened for him. So to the people who took him, I don't care why you did this, but I ask as a mother that you think of your own children or of the child that you once were and set my boy free. Thank you. In the biographical drama All the Money in the World, a 16-year-old boy gets kidnapped and because his mother doesn't have the cash for his ransom, his grandfather, a billionaire oil tycoon, has to pay. One small problem though, he refuses to do so. The movie was actually already finished when Kevin Spacey, who portrayed Grandpa Getty, was caught in the spotlights of sexual harassment cases. Director Ridley Scott immediately replaced him with another great actor, Christopher Plummer, although his first reaction was probably something more like this. Shit. <laughs> oh, shit. And then, me. And then I'm on the phone and said, Mark? I mean, I'm so efficient. I don't have reshoots, ever. I don't go over budget. I'm usually right on or just under budget. So I don't really allow for that, but if it happens, I'm ready. To get a big actor like Plummer on such short notice can be pretty tough to pull off. Then again, Sir Ridley can be quite convincing. The very fact that he flew over from London to meet me in... I was, I was also kneeling. <laughs> <laughs> he was always in the running anyway. There were only two. And I figured, you know, it's it's spacey or it's him. As the main theme of the film is having a lot of big bucks, what would the actors themselves do if they had all the money in the world? I don't really want anything more than what I have. Yeah, right. That's totally a rich person's answer. Now let's try to get more realistic ideas from the team. Oh, I would get all the cars that I wanted and all that. I'm completely selfish, but but I would. Uh, I would really reserve most of it for either diseases, for cures, uh, or and, and save the animals. I'd probably get season tickets to Disneyland and um, <laughs> a, a private jet to take me there whenever I'd like. But of course, that's just in my own fantasy land. I just make sure that we're good, that my kids are good, that the people that are around me that that are that really need it are good, and then you know focus on the things that are important to me as far as you know philanthropy and things of that nature, you know, helping especially, you know, inner city kids, at-risk youth. Uh, there's a lot of drug problems right now in our world. There's a big opioid epidemic that's going on in our world, uh, pharmaceutical drugs uh, in communities now, affluent communities all over the world, everybody's affected by it. So there's a lot of things that we would try to kind of do. Don't get too greedy though, or you could end up just like the old billionaire John Paul Getty. We need to pay the ransom, Mr. Getty. I do not have the money to spare. It's a tragedy of a man who, who learns too late about what he should have done with his heart. And uh, that, that's what fascinated me. It was the disintegration of, of an extraordinary kind of greatness in dealing with money to see a guy who is so wealthy uh, and would do so much even for, for the art world and for the culture, but yet, you know, wouldn't pay for his laundry, wouldn't let anybody use the phone, and wouldn't pay for his son, um, you know, when he was kidnapped. It's a, it, his grandson, it's, it's fascinating. You know, they're both, it's two sides of the coin, and both of those circumstances create a giant moat around people to not have enough and to have too much. Ah, but you can never have too much of those greenbacks though, Michelle. As long as you take a lesson from this movie on how not to use it when your loved ones are in danger. If you have all the money in the world, at least buy a ticket and see this no! true story as it's out now. Like what you see? Subscribe to our channel for more exclusive videos.